right, here we have Mark Ryan of DNR Tobacco, one of my favorite tobacconists in the world, and the man who saved Perique for us. Without Mark Ryan, we would not have Perique today. And you've got your wonderful DNR tobaccos here. I think that they're underappreciated. I really I do. That. And I've got some that everybody should have. One, for example, down here is our VIP, the Taps tobacco. May I pull that out of the sleeve? Absolutely. Thank you. This one, in my opinion, is one of the great Virginia Periques of the world. If you haven't had it, you must. Man, I appreciate it. It's very thoughtful. Oh, it yeah, is. A, and it ages amazingly well. Virginia Perique, 20% Perique, 80% super high-grade Virginia, and lightly aromatic. Yep. Because we had some demand for that, so we created a blend using the, the palates of the guys in my uh, Triangle Area Pipe Club right. to help refine it. So it's got an interesting note, and like you said, surprisingly, it's really got a major following. Oh, and it's people excellent. People buy 10 tins at a time. They love exactly. it. Exactly. It's hard to find. It really is hard to find. I think you sold me the first tin of that like six years ago, and you said you've got to try this. It's it's really wild. and boy, that's just amazing. I appreciate that. Yeah. And our company's different, and that's why some of the acceptance is, you know, based well, right. on trial because once they try it, they love our stuff. And the reason for that is historically we were a roll your own manufacturer. Right. Exactly. You know, when the tax went from a dollar to twenty five. We changed our gut and changed the pipe. Well, unlike any of the other companies that did that, we went at it seriously to be legitimate in the category. That's right, I think and, you did. And in going to the shows, what we found, like, because I use the highest grade leaf, That's what it is, is. Is a lot of the traditional pipe guys love and respect what I do because they're getting high grade leaf. And a lot of the fellows don't like the aromatics so much. Right. And they love the fact that so many of ours emphasize the varietal character of the leaf in the blend. Yes. You know, and they appreciate that. So they'll go, and some of them will smoke it straight. Some will use it for blending. Right. You know, and, and it's funny, the hobbyists are an eccentric group. We had people talk about how they would stove it or press it with all these weird presses. Wow. And I would ask, like, man, it tastes wonderful to me already, but, That's you know, right. it's an unusual crowd. And you are, you've you know? boxed up, or I should say bagged up, different varietals here. For the hobbyists to blend at home, I don't know anybody else who does that. McClellan tins it, but then it's horrendously expensive. Well, it's it's evolved, and originally when we were going to the shows, we were bringing samples of whole leaf. Right. And we did it to sell a little bit, but mostly it was educational. I was trying to help educate, you know, the consumers. This is what the actual tobacco looks like. This is what it smells like before you adulterate it with all the chemical flavorings right. and humectants and antimicrobials and stuff. And we did it just kind of to support the club and the education and bring everybody up. That's right. And then because I've got so many rare varietal leaves in my inventory, the hobbyists started asking me, well, can you cut some? And... You know, I want to get some of this, I want to get that, I want to play with it. So we started doing that, and we began bringing small amounts just to share with our friends. Yep. Well, now it's turned out there's so much interest, we're actually getting ready to introduce a line called a blender's bench. Oh, neato. And we'll have 20 to 30 varieties. Some might be a few, like I think our Yanin's jam down to like maybe three bales. And I have a couple, I might just have one or two bales. Wow. But I probably have eight to ten Orientals. You know, and I've got, you know, different Virginias, you know, by stock height and, you know, by, you know, geographic That's amazing. Area. And just over the 25 years, I've accumulated some unusual tobaccos. Yes. And um, I've had so many people express interest in releasing some for their own enjoyment. Exactly. That, um, Oh, that's been 30 and, different varietals. I, I would say we probably have close to 30. Because, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, there's, there's just so much stuff out there, and if you've been collecting as long as I have, you accumulate. So. Now, there's two so. things you tripped over in those comments that I want to bring you back to. I wish he would shut up. <laughs> that's loud. Um, the two things are, number one, the cut. I really appreciate your cut, but a lot of pipe tobacco smokers don't like that very thin, you know, cut, but I really love it. Well, we have some that are thinner cut that are European fine cut. Yeah. Actually, most of them now we try to get between one eighth and one twelfth of an inch. Yep. Okay. When we originally did it, we were shooting for that one twelfth, which is a good number. You know, like a lot of stuff from McClellan is in that category. Right. Whereas the roll your own guys that were fudging, yep. they went 
20 cuts an inch plus so minus. Shape, That's cut. really fine. Yep. Okay. Most of ours are a thicker cut, but like our three sales, which is a European fine cut, it's real fine. We got a halves wear, the right back, and then a couple of the blends. And, and those aren't directly as suited to pipe tobacco. Although we have a lot of pipe guys use it because they blend it. Because when you have a fine cut like that with a lot of cuts per inch, it gives more surface area for the fire to burn. It's like yeah. trying to light a piece of paper on the edge versus the flat surface. That's right. So by nature, it will burn a little hotter. Okay. Well, you got to learn to smoke so, slow. And, and what it is, though, is some of the guys will say, man, like the back is moist and it's, it's just you know, not balanced enough, and they'll put that fine cut in there, uh -huh. you know, to balance the blend out for the smoking characteristics sure. and stuff. Sure, as their own home blend. Or, or they might even want to, because, you know, we've got the straight Virginias and some of the others. Mm -hmm. They might want to add, you know, a little bit more of that element, you know, to the flavor profile. Yep. So. Another one that you've Thank got, you, and I can't quite find it here. Maybe it's this one. Nope. One of my favorites, uh, it's just my go-to blend, is two-timer. Which is a very straightforward, burly blend, Yeah. not flavored in any way, and uh, I don't see it, but you offer it in tins we, and then also have, in bags. We have it here and we have one open. Oh, here it is, this sure. The thing I love about yeah, that here it is. Is, is, is it took me a little while to get that and to come out with it. Um, my palate is, is, is very funny on burly, if, it, if it's not a really good burly. Right? Burly's in general to me a little more earthy, Yes. you know, versus the natural sweetness, but in the old days, they would spend more money on stock, and you could double toast it. Right. And it takes some of that out, and it gives it a natural sweetness, because it, I'm, I'm not a chemist, but I understand it caramelizes some of the amino acids into amino sugars, and it gives it a natural sweetness that's just wonderful, and I love it. Yes. I like it straight, but also we use it in blending. Yeah. William's Delight, okay? That's one that we did for the smoking contest in Chicago a few oh. years back. And the criteria was, you can't have a blend that's got a component that some people can't smoke. Okay. So no Latakia, no right. Perique, nothing strongly aromatic. So what we did was we selected three tobaccos that had a natural sweetness that would marry well. So we put the two-timer in that, the okay. double toasted burley. We had some black Cavendish and then some high-grade Turkish Izmir. Wow. Each one has a vein of sweetness, but from a different angle. And we put that together and blended it so it would balance, and that's what the Williams Delight is. Well, I'm going to pick some so of that up today. Yeah, I had heard of that one. That's yeah. I'm going to pick some of that up today. Yeah, that's good. Now, the other thing that you that you tripped over that I wanted to talk about was the humidity level of the tobaccos. That's the other part when I say you, you're just not appreciating what's going on at DNR. Oh, that stuff comes so dry. Oh, hold on a minute. It's not so much dry as there's no PPG in there, no other kinds of additives and that kind of thing. And then I think it was last year or the year before I heard you say that tobacco starts to mold unless it's processed. It starts to mold at about 16%. Is that right? Well, we started in January of 92 and historically we had that RYO history. Yes. Which is tender bagged at a lower moisture, yep. 15 to 16%. Well, we carried that through. Okay. My couple main reasons though for me to do that, when you get above 16% moisture, you got to add chemicals to keep it from molding. So that is, okay. I heard correctly, 16% so is the get above that, phase. you got in introduction of microbials, so you've got to have that, and then if it, you want to keep that up, you've got to add humectants and stuff. Not to say that there won't be an issue because we don't put all the chemicals and sometimes it, it will still be introduced. Okay. Yeah. But we support it. I mean, all the good guys will do that. But 16% is the key. The other thing is, if you'll notice, like our regular tins, okay, it's it's just like our traditional pipe tobacco line that we talked about earlier with the Weems Delight and English Hoopla. I only get 40 grams in that. Right. I couldn't get 50 grams in there if my life depended on it. That's exactly right. The traditional right. stuff can take 50. You want 10 grams of water? You want me to pay taxes on water? Right. Or PPG, so which ready, is even heavier. It's ready to smoke. And if yeah. you want to hydrate a little bit, get a hydrostone or something, add a little moisture. Right. In small amounts. You can do that. Because you, when, you, when you get a larger container, you don't want to introduce moisture to the whole amount. That's right. Because it can degrade you know, down the road. That's right. Take it out and have your little pouch, your little Tupperware container, and keep your humidifying device in there. Yeah. And that's what you're pulling out. Plus, if you're pulling into a larger bag or a tin, your manual contact is breaking that leaf up. Yes, it is. Okay, so you got to watch with that. And you're leaving the oils and stuff so like that. So I always that, tell yeah. people, have your little container that you work out of, but if you have something in the, you know, you don't want to hydrate the whole thing. That's right. But that's it. 
Oh, that's fantastic. 16%. I try and keep it under that because I don't want to add the humectants in my, into my crop. That's exactly right. People misunderstand right. that, and you are paying right. just for the water at that point, aren't you? Yeah. Well, like I said... 24% for traditional pipe tobacco. Just figure it out. It's a lot. Uh -huh. And, you know, our traditional ones, we went with more of that style because that was the palette mm -hmm. for that target market, and that's... We were able to get 50% of that. You know, four lines on that. You mentioned the VIP. You mentioned the Williams Delight. Yep. We have a traditional English blend, which is English hoopla. And then we also have, what I'm really excited about, is the London Dock. Now, that's a brand that was historically significant in the last century, but was abandoned 40 years ago. Wow. So I was approached to see if we could reproduce that, you know, for the Asian market. And after six iterations and going through some of the old guys that used to smoke it, I think we hit a home run. How about that? So, now actually the original blend had deer tongue, oh. which you may be familiar with. It's kind of dangerous because it's got a natural cumin and it can be bloody nose. Right. And us old guys, if we're on heart disease. That's stuff, right, any high blood issue. pressure medication. So we didn't yeah. put that in so it's safer, but we worked with the big flavoring house. They've got a substitute right. for that cumin component, which gives a little sweet note. It does. Uh, it's, it borders on aromatic. I've, yeah. I've, oh, it's, it's an I've aromatic. had a sample of that a couple of times. It's aromatic. Yeah, yeah. And then we had some other stuff, though. It's a complicated one, but I love it. But there's so many wonderful offerings, and I always appreciate seeing you at the show. The other one, this one just started out, too. I got some from last year. Now, this is not what I bought. Here's Cellini Avanti. Last year was some back, other style. The Cellini brothers were here. Their dad yeah. was a real famous blender. Pipe makers here in, yeah, in back, Chicago, yeah. yeah. And just kind of for fun, I did some for the for them, Don or their dad. How nice is that? And we still that? have some of that left. It's not something that we're doing, but it was just kind of fun. We wanted to play in. Sure. You know, they found the old recipe book and oh, that's great. Just Don and their dad we played with it. That's and great. So we still have a few of those, but it's not what we're going to go for production. Well, you they, they have a lot of aromatics. That was another, you know, heavy aromatic sort of variety. That's true. Well, that's what sells in most shops, you know. That's right. Aromatics. That's right. This crowd is different than the public that that's way. That's right. Yeah. It's a different yeah. group that comes here. Well, thanks for this wonderful interview. You're a great tobacco it, man. So There's much. no doubt about that. that. We'll put this up and I'll send you a link. Okay, thanks yeah, again. Thank Good you. to see you. All the best. Take care.